haven't done a how-to video here in a while. Today though, Adobe announced their latest model for their AI image generation tool, Firefly, as well as a new integration for Firefly in Photoshop. And honestly, I've been using Firefly and Photoshop's Firefly-based Gen AI tools for a while now. And as a skeptic, like basically everyone was, of the usefulness of Gen AI tools when all of this first came out, I have recently been convinced that it's actually quite useful, especially for creatives. So. When Adobe asked me if I wanted to check out the latest features before they were released and make a video on them, I said yes. So here is not just how to use Firefly 3 AI image generation, but why as a creative, it is the best image generation tool out. And it's probably the only one you should be using in my opinion. So first up, if you're not familiar, Firefly lets you create images using text prompts, similar to Dolly, Mid Journey, and others that you probably have heard of. Adobe's though is unique in a number of ways. And again, it is the only one I would recommend using over all of the other ones. I'll explain why in a sec. But first, let's go over how to use Firefly. Okay, first we're gonna head to firefly.adobe.com and log in with your Adobe account. If you don't have one, you can actually sign up for an Adobe account and get a free trial using a link below to test it out. Once logged in, you should see a page that looks like this and be immediately presented with a text box that you can write a prompt into to generate a starting image. I say starting because there's a lot of things you can refine after that. So let's type something in and click generate. You'll be presented with four options at this point. This one, actually pretty solid, I think. Okay, so from here though, you have a bunch of options on the left side. Starting with the image generation model that it's using, we're using Firefly 3, and you'll just always want to use the latest model most of the time as it's going to have the best results. Then we have aspect ratio for the image itself that it's going to generate, maybe square for Instagram or 16 by nine for a still in a video, etc. Content type allows you to choose between an illustration art, as it calls it, or a photo, aka something more realistic. Auto here chooses which of these based on the prompt. In this case, I said photo in the prompt, so it knew to make a photo. Then we have structure, which allows you to use a reference image either uploaded from your computer, or you can find one in Adobe's library to have the generated image match the outline and depth of the reference photo. Styles is next, and we have a slider to adjust how intense we want the visuals to be. So basically how much we want it to be stylized. We can also upload or choose a reference photo for it to try and match the style of here. And lastly, we have effects. If you select all, you'll see just how many there really are. And of course, whatever you select here, Firefly will try and mimic. Same goes for the color and tone options, lighting options, and even camera angle, which is one I like as someone who thinks in camera angles and might want a specific top-down shot for something, for example. You can also click the edit dropdown on one of the generated images to use that image as the structure or style reference, as well as use generative fill and expand right in the browser on the generated image. We'll talk about those a bit more though in a sec. And then you use all of these and tweak your prompt. The more you write these prompts, the more you figure out how to get it to create things more specific to your needs, by the way. And you keep iterating until you find an option that you like. You download it by clicking the download icon at the top right of the photo. And there you go. I've actually used this myself when I need a photo to say add to a thumbnail or even add a generic router on a table with plants like I did in a video not too long ago. And this new model is actually much better at generating images and the added adjustments that you can make kind of make it easier to get exactly what you need. Now, when you do click download, you'll be presented with this notice and it is important. Essentially, Adobe co-founded the C2PA or the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity, which is a nonprofit project with Adobe, Intel, Arm, Microsoft, Google, the BBC, and a ton of others that have joined, aiming at providing publishers, creators, and consumers the ability to trace the origin of different types of media. Basically, it's built in tech to help people identify whether an image was AI generated or not using content credentials. Content credentials will be automatically attached to Firefly generation to show that AI was used in the creative process. Now, these content credentials combine watermarking, an embedded mark on digital content that isn't detectable by human eyes or ears, secure metadata that is digitally signed data attached to an image showing when it was created, who created it, where it came from, and what edits were made to it, and fingerprinting, which is a unique identifier that is attached to the content that can be matched to a stored copy of the original provenance later if needed. They are also cryptographically signed, so they are tampered evident and any changes made are easily identified. Something that I think we can all agree at this point is going to be, or already is, pretty important. Now that brings us to another huge reason why I think you should only be using Firefly for your image generation, especially if you're a creative. Rights. 
Most of the other image generation models scrape the internet to teach their AI models what things are, and then they generate the content based on what they find. The issue is that most of the time they are scraping websites without their permission, and so you technically don't have the rights to the images that are generated. For average people, just playing with the tool probably doesn't matter that much, but if you're using this for professional reasons and maybe you're creating a commercial piece of content, you're working with a brand and creating an asset for them, you might be breaking a copyright. Now think about like using stock footage or stock images. There are sites where you can buy images and videos that the creator of them has built in the cost of the rights to use the clip or photos and give you commercial rights to use it in your own projects. For example, on Adobe Stock, Adobe Stock Image Video site. Now you technically need the same for these generated images. Firefly is the only one I know of that includes these rights with every image you create. Essentially, Firefly was trained on Adobe Stock Photos, which offers over 400 plus million assets, which were vetted to be higher quality, by the way, as well as openly licensed content and public domain content that Adobe, and thereby you in this case, have rights to, essentially offering you intellectual property indemnification. I have personally worked with clients to help make content for them where they have asked for proof of rights to every single photo, video clip, and anything else that I put in the video. And so if I wasn't using Firefly in those scenarios, then I wouldn't have been able to use any of the generated images that I had. Now, lastly, there is one other update today that we should go through quickly. The Firefly website used to be the only way to generate photos using Firefly, but along with the new model announcement, Adobe launched the same Firefly Model 3 inside Photoshop beta, with plans to move it to the regular Photoshop soon enough after, as usual. Now, Photoshop has always used Firefly to power its generative AI tools. Generative Expand being the first thing that Adobe launched that allows you to use the cropping tool, pull beyond your image, and then have it generate the rest of the image for you. I have used this feature a lot. When I have a photo that I took horizontally maybe for my YouTube thumbnail, and then I need it to be vertical for social media. So when you do that, you get variations to choose from like usual and can generate more. You can also give instructions to have it generate something more specific. If you leave it blank, it'll just try and use the original image to decide what could be outside of that original frame. And honestly, I use that a lot and it does a pretty solid job. These pants, for example, not real. And yet I do own some pants that look just like them. Hmm. Then Adobe added in generative fill to Photoshop. This allows you to basically select something with any of the selection tools, like the object selection tool, for example, and then tell it what to generate in that space, and it'll blend it into the original image as a new layer. Now, after you download Photoshop beta from the link below and either log in with your Adobe account or again, sign up for a free trial, you can select a new file, choose whatever size you want, and you'll immediately be able to click generate image, and it'll pop up a lot of the same options that we just went through on the Firefly site. But hey, now you can use it where you probably already are in Photoshop instead of the extra step of going to the site, doing it, and then downloading it. They also updated the generative fill and generative expand features with the new model, and there are new options like the ability to upload a reference image for the model to try and match the style of, generate background to replace the entire background in a few clicks with something generated, generate similar after you generate an image, but maybe just want a slight variation of it, and enhance detail to sharpen whatever you generate as well. Okay. I hope that was useful for anyone who kind of like wants to dip their toe into generating AI images or maybe professionals that just weren't quite sure which generative AI tool to use. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, appreciate hearing from you guys. If you're new here, check out the rest of my channel. I do a real world test series where I review products and I also kind of travel and we explore while we do that. We talk about history and restaurants and other fun stuff. It's a weird format, I admit, but hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, there's also my decoder series where I explain new technology. Right now though, I'm gonna mess around with Firefly a bit more. Bye. No. Good timing, honk. <sighs> Filming on a highway. It's basically what we do here.